If you haven't read Lord of the Flies, you're probably going to have to in school one day. Let me give you an abridged version for when that time eventually comes. The Lord of the Flies is a book about a bunch of little British boys who got marooned on a deserted island, and the book tells the story about what the boys do to survive the elements, but also themselves. Within like a week on the island, the boys devolve into complete savages, covering themselves in face paint and killing a pig -y. I said too much. And when I read the book in high school, I thought having the boys turn savage so quickly wasn't all that accurate. As a former young boy myself, I was insulted that William Golding thought that us little boys were so heartless. But then I remembered all the things that happened at my scout camp, Camp Geronimo, and I realized that Lord of the Flies is still inaccurate. The boys would have gone savage way faster. Listen. I'm a cautious person when I'm hanging around the guys. In PE, the other boys would be playing this game called Quarters, where you would fling quarters at people's knuckles until they bled, but I wouldn't play that game because it's dangerous and I'm a loser. Or when I was at a party and someone wanted to play the knife game to show off how good their hand-eye coordination was, I wouldn't play that game either because I needed my hands to draw. But something about being with the guys in the middle of the woods? I would live on the edge. Every summer, our troops stayed at this camp called Camp Geronimo, named after the Apache Indian who was the first person to yell Geronimo while doing a sick backflip into his pool. One time, me and a couple other boys, I don't remember who started it, but we were playing with matches, and okay, I know what you're thinking, but nothing bad happened, okay? We just accidentally lit some dried bushes on fire and it got somewhat out of control, but it's okay, it's fine, okay? We told the scoutmaster that there was a loose fire spreading faster than we could put it out, and he got everyone in the troop to stomp on it, and we never got in trouble. What were we doing with the matches? Oh, we were just lighting them and throwing them at each other. Anyway, about 30 other scout troops attended Camp Geronimo, and we would spend a whole week sleeping in tents and earning merit badges. Most of the camp honestly felt like school, but outside. Like, when you got to the camp, you were given a schedule of classes, and for the next seven days, you would go to those classes and learn and fill out packets and sometimes even have homework. Which probably helped us not devolve into savages. I mean, sure, the classes weren't as boring as English or geometry. Geronimo's classes were wilderness survival, kayaking, or bear self-defense. Earning a merit badge required two things. The first thing, you had to write stuff down. Name and point out the major parts of a kayak. Kayak. Explain to your counselor the hazards you are most likely to encounter while participating in kayaking activities. Bears. And the second part of the merit badge, you had to actually go out and do stuff. Capsize the kayak, swim it and the paddle to the shore, and if you don't make it, the bears will get you. I never got the kayaking merit badge. You had to be at least 12 to go to Geronimo, but you could go as an 11 year old if a parent was coming with you. And at the time, my dad was a camp counselor. My birthday was May 14th, and Geronimo was at the end of May, so I barely made the cutoff as the youngest person going. Geronimo was a big step from spending three days at Cub Scout Day Camp to spending a week in the wilderness. What made it worse was I was going to be spending a whole week with all the mean older scouts and my dad. There was this one scout named Paul. When I was 11, he was 15. So naturally, he would pick on me and make fun of me. Ha ha, I get it. I'm small, so I suck. But silver lining, he got fatter. And a couple years ago, he reached out to me. And I had been doing the whole YouTube thing for a while. He was off starting his own business. And he wanted to do some business opportunity with me. And I just said, hey, do you want to do my merch? So now he works for me. So kids, if you ever have bullies, just become successful on YouTube and then hire them to sell plushies. He's actually a really good merch guy. He gets all my stuff into these retail stores. So if you see a floof plushie at Hot Topic, you can say, thanks, Paul. Bullies really do make a difference. Anyway, self-promotion aside, my first year at Geronimo, I was a little bit on the very young side compared to everyone else. I was taking a class called Orienteering. The class taught us how to read maps and use a compass. And one day, it was time for our class to go on a scavenger hunt thing. We were given a list of places we had to go to, and we were supposed to use our compass and count our paces to get to each specific location. Then when we got to our destination, there would be a marker somewhere, and we would have to write down what that marker was. There were 10 different markers that we had to find, and the course was supposed to lead us in a circle. The leader who was in charge of our group and the compass was an older scout named... Paul. It wasn't the merch guy Paul, but I think it would be funnier if it was. Our group set off to the first location. Having a compass and counting your steps isn't the most accurate way of navigation, but we weren't allowed to use Google Maps, so... 
When we got to the spot, we had to look around for a little bit to find the marker, but we eventually found it and then we were off to the second location. This time, the marker was harder to find. The spot we landed on was pretty far from where the marker actually was. At the third location, we couldn't find the marker. But we did see this reflective sign on a tree, and we figured that's what the marker was supposed to be, so we wrote it down. At this point, I decided to grab my own compass and give it a try. My compass pointed in a direction that was a little bit off from Paul's direction. Not by a whole lot, but just enough. But remember, I was the little kid. Nothing I said mattered. Paul said things to me like, Oh, you don't know how to use a compass. I bet yours is broken. I'm never going to work for you one day. And you know what? I believed him. This guy is 15 years old. Do you know how wise and experienced he is? So we kept going and struggling. We used anything we found as a marker. Some piece of trash, it's a marker. Hey, this tree has an A and an M carved into a heart. Kind of weird that it's at an all boys camp. Do you think that it's a marker? Eventually, we all had to admit that we were completely lost. The other boys told Paul to hand over his compass and Paul reached into his pocket, pulled out his compass, and two buzz magnets. Buzz magnets are magnets that are shaped like a bullet and you can throw them up in the air and they make this cool buzzing sound. They sold them at the camp store, so that's why Paul had them. And everyone immediately figured out why we were lost. For those of you who don't know how compasses and magnets work, I don't know either. I think it has something to do with them coming from outer space. A compass is supposed to point to the magnetic north pole, and a magnet will mess up the direction a compass is supposed to point in. Paul's compass wasn't pointing to his pants the whole time. We would have been suspicious if that had happened. But because his compass was right next to a magnet, it got uncalibrated. And then we all got lost in the woods and died. And that's why I don't have an orienteering merit badge. I was upset because my compass probably wasn't broken, but I didn't stand up for myself because I don't do that. I have more Camp Geronimo stories, like the time me and my friend threw a Ziploc bag full of water at the older kids lean to, and then I ran away so fast that I threw up, but I already did a video about that, and it's five years old, and it's very bad, and you're not allowed to watch it. So the moral of this video is, just because you're young doesn't mean you're stupid, but it does mean you make bad videos on YouTube. Also, check your pockets before going orienteering. Going orienteering. Sounds like a tongue twister. Going orienteering. Going orienteering. Going orienteering.